Hey Ross World, my money makes money. How to buy a car, how to buy a car. Now, this is not gonna be a detailed version of how to buy a car. I'm gonna be vague here, I'm gonna be very vague because I want you to just kind of grasp the total concept and not really get into those fine details. Now, take for instance, you have a really good job, but you want a really nice car. You see, everybody's driving around with these new vehicles. And it doesn't matter the name brand, but you really want a nice vehicle. But, but, you go to the dealership, first and foremost, you know your credit is not in order. So anytime your credit is not in order, what is gonna cost you? It's gonna cost you more money, more money. Now. Quite frankly, if your loan is over 5 or 6%, and some people even say that's high, and I can agree, but it's even over 5 or 6%, it's not time for you to buy a car. It's not time for you to buy a car. Now, first and foremost, before you go to the dealership, and this is always great advice, and I've done it. I've done it. I went to the dealership with not good credit, with not good credit at all, and it cost me. It cost you in the long run. Get your credit together. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Buy yourself a hoopty. Buy yourself a bucket. And for you guys who don't understand what I'm saying, buy yourself a used and abused car from those chop shops that you see on the side of the road where you're like, I ain't buying one of those cars. But this is if, if you really need a car or you really want a car, okay? Sometimes you got to fake it until you make it. I mean, remember those hubcaps that spin? Not the real spinning rims, but the hubcaps that spin. <laughs> They're cheap as hell. I never had them. Uh-uh, not me. But the point, when you go to the car, you have to look at a couple of things. How much you make. How much the car costs. Where's your credit score? How much money do you have to put down if you have to put money down at all? Now, granted, if you can save up the amount of money to pay that car outright, then do so. Because guess what? The interest is going to kill you even if it's at 1%. Even if it's at 1%, you're still paying the bank money. You're still paying those people money. So if you have the money to buy it off, then buy it off. Don't incur debt if you don't have to. Now, some people say, hey, just keep saving, keep saving, keep investing, do what you have to do in order to pay for that car outright. I agree with that too. I'm not against that. But for some of you who may be making 50, 60, 70,000, look at how much you make in accordance with your expenses with your credit score. And most importantly, most importantly, the interest rate at the years you'll be paying that interest rate, okay? That principle. This is not about the car you want. This is about the car you can afford. And you can reference this video right here, buy a car you can't afford. Because this is imperative, guys, that you understand that a car is really worthless in the long run. Now, it's a great tool. It's a beautiful tool. I love cars. I'm a, let me, I love cars. I'm, I get choked up about cars, okay? So don't get me wrong. It's one of the Americans' pastime. We love cars. But they're worthless. They're worthless. It's one of the few things in life that as soon as you buy it, it starts to depreciate in value 5, 10, 20%, depending on how long you have it, if you should have it. Because in most cases, if you go out and buy a car, you might as well keep it. You're not going to get what you paid for it. But some people say if you take care of it, over the course of time, it'll pay for itself. That's a really good point because some cars, you don't supposed to have five and ten years. But I see people like with those Golf GTIs or those Honda Civics. They still got the 89 version. That car is still paying for itself. Those cars are relics, but they're still running great and they pay for themselves over the course of time. I had a 99 Mazda Protégé, 99 Mazda Protégé DX, I think it was the lowest version. I still had roll up windows. And people used to talk trash about me. They used to talk trash because I'm a big dude and a little Mazda Protégé. Okay, go ahead and laugh. All right, you got it out. But that car was paid for. That car was paid for, it was around $12,000, $13,000 and it was paid for and it was all mine and I did not have a car note. And my insurance, my insurance was cheap, and I was being cheap. So I was paying like $100, okay, $100 at a $250 deductible. And I was like, uh-uh, you know what? I don't want a deductible. I went down to zero. 
I had a zero deductible. Anybody ever had a zero deductible? And I was only paying $130, was it every two or three months or every month? I don't know. It was cheap, guys. It was cheap because my car was paid off. It was absolutely all mine. And that car only took me three years to pay off. Now, when you start getting to these car loans, five, six, seven years paying for a car, if you go over four years, it's probably not something you can afford because the reason why they stretch out those payments is to lower the monthly payment. But the longer the loan, the more the interest. The longer the loan, the more the interest. Because these guys who fund you money, these banks, they don't fucking care. They want you to get a 10-car loan if they could. If those underwriters could give you a 10-car loan at 6%, they would. Even at 4%, they would because you're going to be paying them interest on top of interest and for 10 years. Because a lot of people don't pay over their car note. I always tell people if you can afford it and you should be able to because you did your research and you knew what you wanted and how much you can afford going in, you should be at least able to pay an extra $100 on top of the car note that you already have. Once again, this is my opinion, okay? This is my opinion. I have paid off cars and so has my wife. Just like my wife, she paid off her last vehicle. She wasn't playing around. She paid extra money monthly and then she, she took some of her tax return, boom. She tried to get rid of that thing because she understood that that interest rate was killing her throughout the course of time. I don't recall, I don't know if it was six or seven at the time, but she understood, let me pay off this damn loan so I can ride around in my own car. Because listen, guys, you may say it's your car, it's not your car. It's the bank's car until they give you that damn lease, okay? Until they give you that damn lease. It's their car because at any given moment, you falter on your loan, you go outside, yeah, man, we about to roll out to the club. Nuh-uh. Your car is gone. Repo man came and got your shit, bruh. They came and got your shit. You think you looking cute, you got your dress on, you wearing something tight, got your little hoops in, got your perfume on, you're about to get in your little Escalade. <laughs> nah, sister. Nah. N-A-W. Nah. They didn't repo your shit. So understand that you have to be savvy, smart, intelligent, sound mind. And the reason why I'm saying all these things is because if you're not, you will make a horrible decision based upon what you want and not what you can afford. Based upon how much money you make thinking you can't afford that car. Thinking that interest rates won't kick you in your ass for years to come. Now, so you're asking, when should I buy a car like that? Well, first and foremost, buy a car like that when you have all the money saved to buy it outright. If you want a BMW 5 Series fully loaded at $55,000, $60,000 and save up that amount and go buy that car. Or, or, now some people will buy a car and that car is worth a half of what they make in a year. What am I talking about? $100,000, your car is $50,000. You think that's a good idea? Your car is worth half of what you make in a year? You still have other expenses? So you're saying, well, should I do it at a third? Should I do it at a tenth? I'll say this. I'm going to make this real, real simple. If you make $80,000, $85,000, your car shouldn't be over $20,000. You're like, what type of car am I about for $20,000? I don't know. You're going to have to do the research. But this is what I'm talking about. And it also depends, guess what? If you're married. If you're married. Maybe you guys want to buy a new car and that car is paid off. Let's say, for instance, you bring in $120,000, $130,000. Now, you can up the ante on that to one hundred to maybe a thirty dollars or $40,000 car. You're kind of tipping the scale in a third of how much you make a year. And a lot of people say, hey, don't do that. But there's so many factors to consider. Take for instance, you make $100,000, but your interest rate is at either one or 2%. And that car loan, and that car loan is only for three or four years. Now, if you did the math, that's not too bad and it's not too great. In my opinion, it meets right in the middle. So, that is why I said you have to be savvy, you have to be intelligent, you have to really sit down, write it out, all your expenses, because now you are doing what? You're adding a new expense. You're adding a new bill for your total income, for your total income, because you can't only factor in the car note. Car note, 
car insurance. And what most people don't factor in is the fucking maintenance. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. When you buy a luxury car, you pay luxury prices on them getting fixed. Now, granted, that first two or three years, you're under that bumper to bumper warranty. Now, factor in those prices without that bumper to bumper warranty, or if you would get into an accident and it's your fault, the deductible you'll have on your insurance. Because a lot of times these people have these expensive cars and the deductible is at what? Their deductible is at what? 750 or 1000 because they think they're trying to save money just in case. If you don't have that money in the bank account to cover that accident or that damage, then guess what? You're going to be riding around an expensive ass hoopty. So before you go out and buy a car, sit down, write it all the way out, think about it, look at your expenses, look at your income, look at everything you have, your bills, your investments, and see can you feasibly actually do it if your car was to get into a car accident, break down, so on and so on. You have to do these things very intelligently. You can't just go out and buy a car that you think you can afford right now. You have to buy a car, you have to buy a car that you can afford for years to come. Because at the end, the bank gonna get their money or they're gonna get the car you thought you had. This is Ross where we're being smart with the car we need, not the car we want. I'm out.